Hello everybody, welcome to your Monash Exercise at Home series. My name is Andrew. We're just going to do a short, sharp, freestyle, martial arts inspired cardio and strength program. Only cardio. So we're going to be doing interval bursts of different kinds of um, martial arts moves. Reasonably straightforward, so not too heavy on the combinations. Just throwing ourselves into the moves in a way that's safe for our joints and a way that's safe for our body. So by all means, do if you feel any kind of discomfort with some of these moves, adjust them to suit what your body needs. Making sure joints remain soft and not quite locked out when we throw our moves and for our kicks especially, coming back to the body on exactly the same line. Like you take a video of it going out, then running in reverse, get back to the floor. So, let's play. We're gonna start out getting warm and doing the moves all at the same time. We'll do it in an accelerated warm up. So feet comfortably in front of us, get our knees nice and bent, and then do a slow, what we call jab cross sequence straight out in front of us. So you can either have your hands by your jaw, or you can have your hands by your sides, turning straight out in front of you. So we call this our jab cross sequence. And then uppercuts. So into the chin. If you're not familiar with these moves, some of the other classes I've uploaded previously have had a longer warm up with more explanation on how to throw these moves well. So if you do want to, please do look at those videos to help give you the confidence. If any of these moves feel like, ah, not quite right. But essentially you want to turn your body driving from the floor, letting your fists ride the platform that your body has created for you to make the moves feel powerful and supported from the inside of your body all the way out to your limbs. Now, hooks. So our three basic punches, lifting our heel, turning our hips, turning our torso and striking across an imaginary jaw, only about a good six inches or so, maybe less, three to six inches in front of your own jaw. Not zero inches, because that would be your own jaw, but very closely in front of your face, not much room. So a close in kind of move, making sure your feet don't get planted in the wet cement, in the concrete shoes, because they would be like concrete shoes. They'd be the death knell for your knees, allowing the turn of the body to be the slingshot action of the strike. Cool, so we'll do a few of these in a row. Straight jab crosses, out and about, lifting the heel, feeling like a long, controlled, straight laser beam. And then uppercuts into our chin, not into our chin, into a chin that's next to ours, in front of ours, into some imaginary person's chin in front of us. <clears throat> And then hooks, lifting the heel, turning the upper body. So you find that even though we're throwing punches, we are warming up your hips, your legs, your torso, and your upper body muscles by doing this. But we will also do some stances and do some knees and kicks to prepare ourselves for our sequence, our upcoming movements completely. So, knee strikes. Knee, knee, hands pulling as a counter lever to the strike of your lower body, pushing through the knee and taking the heel snugly underneath rather than just pushing the foot out, rather than the little knolling the foot hang and dangle, tucking under, striking through. So all of the force is going onto the knee with your hands pulling it in from the other direction. If you actually squeeze your butt and push your hips through a little bit, you'll find it very, very effective. Kicks. Sending the foot out and in, out and in, out and in. Kicking over a chair and not even touching the chair or anything that might be sitting on the chair. So 
So it should feel quite almost whippy. So you thrust, but then you do whip the foot back to your body. Then standing wide, we can also do roundhouse knees, which is essentially the same as our front knee, but we come around to the rib cage. Round to the rib cage, round to the rib cage. So you're coming in side on, and you can either pull, I like to actually pull directly to the kneecap, but you can also pull to the opposite hip. Make sure when you're doing this that you turn the supporting foot so this bottom knee is aligned, so you can come across your body. What we often do to make this easier is actually we do several on one side, then we turn and we do several on the other side. So let's do that. Let's do four on this side, set our heel, four, three, two, one, set, four, three, two, one, set, four, three, two, one, set, four, three, two, one, and then to finish off, we'll do six, six, five, four, three, two, one, turn, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, now side kicks and roundhouse kicks, great for the hips, great for the strength of my big muscles, but I have a knee injury on this side, so my ability to throw them will be a little bit shaky. I might demonstrate on my good leg almost exclusively. So, roundhouse kick, turn the supporting heel as much as you can in the line of where you're gonna throw the kick, so we're gonna throw the kick in front of us, throwing it off to the side, you turn your heel facing off to the side, so doing a roundhouse kick, and as the name implies, the foot comes around and clicks into the rib cage. You can either hit with the top of the foot, or as you're going to tell, hit with the top of the foot only. The ball of the foot can be a bit tricky to do even at the best of times. So turning the heel, pointing the knee where the foot's going to go. I'm just holding the ankle to help set the leg in place. But you coil up, so you coil up. Then you come around with the ball of the foot, or rather the top of the foot, the instep, retract, and return. I should tell you what, we'll throw it with the lead leg, so you don't have to worry about the long switch back and forth. You can throw it from the back leg, but the front leg is a bit easier to do. Turn the heel, rise, kick back, land. Rise, kick back, land. It's a good balance challenge doing it slowly. Let's do it slowly. Here, up, kicking, and back, and land. And you can do it at any height that suits you. If you're flexible, you can do it high, but there's no extra benefit to doing it high. So throwing it high feels weird and wrong and throwing it all over the place and not great for the joints. You're much better off kicking at a height where you know you have absolute control rather than overextending your range because there's no greater benefits to that than that. The muscle benefits are still just the same. And here you get the added benefit of joint safety. Now I'm curious, I'm gonna try and throw a couple on this leg. You certainly should throw a few on this leg. So you balance on both sides, turning the heel, coiling up, kicking out, back and down. Now I'm gonna do mine painfully slowly, so they're not painful. Or if they are, I can feel the pain coming on and get out of the way before it sets in. So out and back. Noticing you do feel quite a pronounced bit of tension in the top of the hip there, which is wonderful. That's your glute medius. That's a hip stabilizing part of the butt muscle. So part of the butt, all good. And stabilizing, all good as well. It's not too bad actually. And now side kicks, turning the heel, getting the foot ready, up, kick, back, and down. It's different to the roundhouse, it's a stomping action. So you're taking the blade of the foot and you're actually stomping forward, down through the heel on the outside edge, striking, coming back, and landing. So, out and back, stomping. And you can stomp on an ankle, on a shin, on a knee, on a hip, on a head, you can stomp wherever it suits, but again, low and controlled, safer and just as effective. 
Other side, turn the heel, out and back, out and back. The side kick is actually my most troublesome kick on this side, but still the same thing, stomp out and back. Stomp out and back. I'll tell you what, you do five more and I'll watch. Go, good side kicking on this leg. Well done. Three, two, one, boom. So, bursts, rest, bursts. In the bursts, burst. Go hard, and then in the rests, get back your sense of humor, and then come again. It'll be short, it'll be sharp, it'll be simple. Let's play. So your number's gonna be 30 seconds of activity, 30 seconds of rest. We're gonna start in, oh, actually, I won't spring on you too much. We'll start in 10 seconds from now. So we've well, got 20 seconds of rest for the first one. We're going in five, four feet planted, straight jab cross, two, one, go. Straight jab cross, so straight up, straight out. Try and hit exactly the same bit of air each time and letting your body turn as much as possible. So we're just gonna do this simple one punch to start with, to burst ourselves in, to feel the time we're working for. You've got 10 more seconds. So crank it up the intensity slightly. Rotate the shoulders, go for that little bit extra range, and done. Well done. So 20 seconds rest. Have a drink if you need to. Get yourself light and happy. And the next time round, we're going to do just the uppercuts. So uppercuts for 30 seconds, starting in three seconds, two, one, go. Uppercuts. So spin to the chin, lift the heels slightly, feel like it's compact, feel like your elbows are actually rubbing your ribcage. So instead of being out here, instead of being running backwards and forwards here, up and in from the hip to the chin, compact. Like your Wonder Woman and you've got your bracelets and you go ching, 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 and bullets bounce off the bracelets in front of you. If you get that feeling, it'll give you that guard sense. Two, one. Well done. Okay. Heart rate going. Good. We get 20 seconds of rest. No, I get 30 seconds of rest. Give you a chance to recover. In and out. The recovery in these sequences is actually arguably, not arguably, scientifically the most important bit. Your ability to go from having worked hard, back to normal, great indicator of fitness and responses to it. Four seconds to go. Three, two, and hooks. So hook, round we go. I love to retract the hook deliberately to activate more back muscle. You can do that if you want. Turning to the chin, lifting the elbows, Swiveling the hips, trying to spring the trap from a explosive twist through the hips and letting the hands right on the back of that. Five seconds, nearly there. Two seconds, one second. There we are. Zero seconds actually. I got behind on my count. So, catch your breath, catch your breath, catch your breath. We're going to do straight knees next. Take the work in the lower body, give the upper body a relative rest. So for our knees, we're gonna go straight out in front. Remember to squeeze our hips, we're not starting yet. You're gonna start in about five seconds from now. So five, four, come back from your three. Back in, two, one, knee. Now if you really want to with the knees, so if you're going from the floor, you can actually do what we call in combat, the running man knee, and actually almost Channel you into Michael Jackson and skip back and pull through. So that's just an option. If you want to do it, it'll increase the intensity, it'll increase the heart rate, and you'll feel a little bit dancy. Four seconds, two seconds, one, boom. Done. So recovery, we'll do another lower body strike. We'll do our straight front kicks. Either standing here, Want a bit of fun? Crouch deep and go. So, front kick, out and back, starting in 10 seconds. So get ready to come back from your drink. It's the burst, it's the recovery, it's the burst. It's four seconds, three, two, go. Kick, kick. So 
I like to roll my guard to remind myself which foot's going forward and just to feel a bit authentic and to set my balance. But as long as your arms don't just do nothing, all good. Control where your arms are, even though you're moving your feet, and try and whoosh, whip back after each strike and drive through the ball foot. Three seconds, two, one, done. Okay, another 30 seconds break. Next time round, we'll do some roundhouse knees. So the roundhouse knees will set it. We're gonna do 15 seconds on one side, turn, 15 seconds on the other side, 10 seconds from now. That'll minimize a lot of the turning and possible pressure through the knees. Three, two, set, go to the right, and go. So, you can either pull the hand to the opposite knee, or you can pull to the hip. We're doing 15 seconds on this side. See how many you can do. It's gonna be almost like a rest part way through. Gonna come with fresh muscles. Two seconds, one, change. So, so can you get more on this side than on the other side? Bring a bit of extra speed, three seconds, two, one, and done. Now 30 seconds of rest. So we'll do roundhouse kicks, 30 seconds, chest on the right leg. That way, yeah, we'll do the three seconds on the left leg next, rather than just switch in the middle. So 10 seconds to go with the roundhouse kick. That's the one where you whip in with the ball of the foot. Oh, this is not my good side. So I'll do it slowly on the side, do a demonstration. Two seconds, one, go. So, I'll let you step back in between. If you don't have to step back in between, you could try if you wanted, just tapping and going, or even staying up and not touching down. That's a great balance challenge. Let's try that. So, out and back, out and back, out and back. This knee's actually not doing too badly today. I had no idea that I could do this. Oh, one, zero, done. Whew. All right. So now, 20 seconds, we'll do roundhouse kicks on this leg and have some nice fun. Whew. Try and master your breath and try not to do nothing. Try to move lightly, it'll help flush your lactate get you ready for the next sequence. Five seconds to go, four, three, two, go. Kick, so you can either kick, step back, or you can kick and tap, or you can just stay up and go kick. Oh, it feels, feels so unco, but gee, it's good for your brain and your balance to give it a try. And when the kick is easiest to go, uh, uh, but try if you can to make every kick, an actual kick, you would actually hit something, really throws your balance out, but it also challenges rather. Right? Uh, I stopped and it was just the time time too. So 30 seconds done. I guess to complete our little sequence, we'll next up do 30 seconds of side kicks on this side. So side kicks with the right leg, starting in 10 seconds from now. Side kick being on you stomp, you can either stomp, step back, stomp and tap back, or stompity stomp stomp. So three, two, one, go stomp, step back, stomp, and tap wall. Uh, or stomp without tapping down. Oh, it's fun. It's fun to try, so stomp, stomp. Oh. I'm going to pretend that I'm doing this because of my knee, but it's actually just because my balance and my general fitness is not as good as I would like. Oh, hang on, knee playing up. Um, and, ah, uh, oh, that was good timing. All right, so hopefully you had a good stompy action there. Left leg, knee free, stomping in 20 seconds from now, so we're going to take your recovery. Got 30 seconds of rest, probably feeling like less than 30 seconds each time. But my big clock in front of me is 30 seconds. 10 seconds from now, get ready, make sure your right leg is set. Four, three, two, and kick with a tap back, or kick with just a tap 
down or kick with no tap down. Uh, with no tap down, he says as he starts to demonstrate. Try to make sure you're sort of looking where your kick is. Oh my goodness. Uh, isn't it amazing when you do these classes, you think, oh, I should do more of that. Well, I'm not doing these classes. Two seconds. One and close enough. <laughs> Okay, gone through each of the sequences. Let's do a super sequence. Super sequence with 15 seconds of every single move. So take a drink, 15 seconds jack cross, 15 seconds uppercut, 15 seconds hooks, 15 seconds knees, front kick, remember it all, roundhouse kick, side kick each side. So it's going to be a beast, it's going to be a long sequence. We'll see how we feel at the end of it. Maybe we'll do it all again. So starting in, give 15 more seconds of break, and then bang, 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 bang. Oh, hang on, round has knees first. Three seconds, two, one, let's go, jet cross. Straight out, if I don't remember it all, good, it's shorter for us. Or bad, a relief perhaps. So, nearly the airs, only 15 seconds of each one, five seconds to go, crank up the intensity, strike like a laser beam, and then single seat uppercuts into the chin, spin through. Try not to keep the heels grounded, lift them a little bit, turn the hips a little bit, make the body be the punch, be the strength behind the punch. Three seconds to go, two, and hooks, around and down. Turn in your heels. You've got a wooden floor that squeaks and turn. Great feedback and reassurance. Been doing it well. Two seconds to go. One, front knees. Straight front knees. You can either do it from the ground, or you can do that running down knee. Can you kick that and pull through? Three seconds to go. Two, one, and now front kicks. So it is a long-term endurance, but not too long-term. Five seconds to go. Hang in there, trying to be strong to the last. Roundhouse knees, roundhouse. We'll do 15 seconds on each side. Okay, we've got five seconds to go. Two seconds, turn, roundhouse knees. Breathe in, be positive, think how wonderful it is for your body to be able to move. Two seconds, one, roundhouse kicks on the right. Roundhouse, maybe go straight four, the balance, not touchdown version. Challenge yourself for static strength and balance as well as for heart rate. Other side, roundhouse kick, tapping back, tapping down or the fun one, the one that just stays and stays and stays with you. Two seconds to go, one, and then side kicks. Same story, kick and tap, kick and tap, or just kick. Now it did pay out for me, so I'm gonna do mine very slowly. I do apologize. And done on that side, just side kick, and back, or just kick, 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 kick. So you've got five seconds to go. Five, two, one. Okay, take a little break. Maybe, we'll do that sequence again one more time, and then it'll be good. Simple, straightforward, heart rate inducing workout in the comfort of your own home or the discomfort of your own home if you're feeling uncomfortable. We have about 12 seconds to go, so get yourself in. This will be the final sequence. So, lay it all out on the ground, no regrets. Five seconds, four, three, two, jab cross. Go straight, straight, and true, breathing through. This is it. 
15 seconds is a flash. It's over before you know it. In fact, five seconds to go. Then uppercuts. Spin to the chin. Turn the hip. Rub the elbows to your rib cage. Strike the chin in front of your own. The one you can imagine. Straight there. Five seconds. Nearly done on this one. Two, one, hooks. Rotation is the key to safety and tower effectiveness. And done. Front knees. Can you do the running man knee? If you can, lift your chest. Give it a try. That's a hell of a try like fun. And there's only five seconds. Four, three, two, front kicks. As crisp as the first one you threw. Five seconds. A couple more each side. One more each side. Roundhouse knees. 15 seconds apiece. Drill the knee coming in to the wrist from the side. Two seconds. One. Other side go. Oh, my goodness. Two, three seconds. Two, one. Done. Roundhouse kick. This side, let's go for the good stuff. Straight out. Or you can tap back. Do what works for you. Remember, doing it at all is the secret to effectiveness. Two seconds, one, done. Over here. <sighs> Trying to make it feel like we are all things to give them. I haven't got a line up for them. See if they do have some pepper behind them. Three seconds, two, one, done. Psychic ride. Oh, slow motion for me, maybe not for you. So striking out, Come on, look at the foot if you can, look where you're going, look where you're feeling, two, one, another side, oh, noticing how everything's a challenge, but you're nearly there, you're nearly there for the whole sequence, you got four seconds to go, three, two, oh, my goodness, okay, take a drink. You've done the work. Let's have a little stretch when you come back. And reward our bodies for what we just did. Here's a yoga mat that I prepared earlier from my yoga class. Got to bring something comfortable to kneel on or to lie on. By all means, be your own guest. It's your house. <laughs> You'll be washing up whatever it is afterwards. So decide. What suits you? All right, so we're gonna come in. Take a knee. Do a hip flexor stretch to start with by tucking the tailbone, sliding the hips forwards, lifting the chest upwards, and rolling the shoulders backwards. I always do this. I should have gone forward with the other knee. I'm gonna turn away from you. Maybe you'll get the feeling. Come forwards first. Reach across your body and very lightly swivel the upper chest, rolling the shoulder backwards and downwards, so the rotation feels like it's in the upper portion of the spine, around where your chest is, and your lower back does not feel uncomfortably as though it is being twisted. Then, straighten up that lead leg, maybe not completely straight if you're stiff like me, but straight-ish, and then without putting weight on that leg, you don't want to hyperextend that knee, tip forward from the belly, pull up from the toe, and let that hamstring stretch warm into place. So it is a strong position for the hamstring stretch. Go there gently, breathe out a little bit and coax your body into the comfort of it. Let yourself find the feeling. Well done by the way. Sometimes those simple straightforward workouts, getting in, getting it done, getting out of there, can be the best way to go particularly when you're time critical. So, come sideways for a figure four or for a yoga style swan. If you're a yoga swan, hip goes above heel, 
straight behind if you're a figure four, sit on the floor and take your knee like that. Either way, bring your chest down over onto your lead thigh and let gravity take your hips downwards. It's the falling of your hips through the floor that is the glute stretch and the hip stretch. So breathe out and enjoy that journey. Travel down to the floor through your exhale and let the hips and the glutes get some movement back. A deep, deep, warm stretch right in the hip of such this lead front leg here. And then because it's fun, rise up and reach back and grab hold of your foot. If you can't do it in the yoga swan position, you probably can do it from here, just reaching back and grabbing it. And then as you pull back, if you're in this position, bring your upper body back to open up the front of the body to get that thigh stretch. If you're in this position, not what you have to do to get the thigh stretch, just be here. So once you can hold onto the foot, square your chest up, slip your hips down, maybe slide your rear knee backwards slightly, and then incrementally gently coax the heel in towards the butt, the thigh stretch right there will be unmistakable. It'll be on and it'll be a beautiful thing. When you breathe out, that's when your body will let go a little bit. So use and save your exhales to get the most out of this stretch. Or all animal stretches. Other side, let's flip it and do the whole thing. Although I won't turn that way because I've turned away from you. I'll stay facing this direction and go with the other leg. So here we go. Lunging in, tucking through the tailbone to open up along. So the hip flexor is just below the hip on that trailing leg. So not the surface thigh, you get some surface thigh muscles too, but there's a deeper one right near the top that you'll feel. You get that by turning your belly button into high beam and by thrusting it forward slightly, and that's the hip flexor. An important muscle to stretch, funny old muscle. Muscle is very connected to human emotion of all things. I've done a sort of alternative therapy activation course and that psoas, hip flexor muscle, is the most important emotional muscle in the body. Lots of deep trauma can get held there. So that stretch is very good for you psychologically as much as it is for you physically. Turn as well to turn the upper body. Roll the shoulders back. Breathe and enjoy your body yielding to the warmth you've created to restoring movement. Then straighten up, that's lead leg, belly button tip rather than coiling up. So don't curl up like a turtle, keep the chest open and hinge from the hip with your heart high. And you'll notice that the hamstring stretch comes on quite quickly, just from the belly tipping. If you pull back through the toes a bit, you'll bring your calf in as well. So it'll become the whole back of the leg from the heel right through your butt. Breathing out, I need this stretch. So I'm going to enjoy it. Hopefully you're enjoying it too. The exhale is how you express your enjoyment and appreciation. And then, same leg, crossing in front, either taking a seat and sitting figure four, belly to thigh, or heart. Throw the hip above heel, straight leg back, and then lie down, belly on thigh. Oh, that feeling of stretch. When you get it right, your hip just sings to you. And then all you need to do is listen in, savor the experience, and exhale as your applause to your own body appreciating the way it's capable of doing this, capable of moving and then of restoring movement. Then up we come, heel up for the fun thigh stretch or sitting back and pulling back on the heel for the fun thigh stretch. It's fun either way. Just stretching your thigh can be fun, which is something you don't often do. And when you do it, you're like, ooh, that muscle could do with more stretching. So enjoy that. In an ideal balanced body, you should have a balance of flexibility between your hamstrings on the back of the leg and the thigh in the front of the leg. So you've got good front to back symmetry. So if you do find your hamstrings seem tighter than your thighs, or your thighs seem tighter than your hamstrings, make your goal in your stretches to do a bit more on the one that needs it more. 
so you can stretch in a way that's healthy for you in the long term. There we go. Let's rise up to our feet. Inhale and exhale. Two more. One more. Maybe just open your chest high because all of us, or most of us, are compressed through our chest from sitting at desks and cars. Like you're embracing the whole universe above you. Across the space between your shoulders and your heart, even more than on your outstretched arms to your upturned palms and fingertips. And then turn the feet out, hand in hand. Thank you for attending my little simple freestyle combat class. Hope to see you back at the gym soon. We are opening a week or two from now, depending on when this film goes to air. So you're almost back to some semblance of normal, incrementally back to normal, normal. So hopefully you're working well at home, enjoying your time at home, and then we'll enjoy seeing you back at the gym when we're all there for our classes and everything's open again.